this is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Harrisburg Area Community College in York, Pennsylvania. And in this podcast, I'll be continuing my review of the bones of the appendicular skeleton, focusing on the bones of the arm, specifically the location and surface landmarks of the humerus. The humerus is the upper arm bone in the brachial region, and it's the largest and longest bone of the arm. It articulates with the scapula on its proximal end and with the radius and ulna on its distal end to form the elbow joint. Okay, let's take a look at the bony landmarks at the proximal end of the humerus. This is the head, the rounded portion that articulates with the glenoid cavity of the scapula to form the shoulder joint, also known as the glenohumeral joint. A great way to identify the left humerus from the right humerus is the orientation of the head. It always points medially towards the scapula. The oblique groove just distal to the head is the anatomical neck. This is the remnant of the epiphyseal growth plate that was once active in the growing bone. The greater tubercle is a lateral projection distal to the anatomical neck. You can feel this bump if you palpate on the lateral side of your shoulder area, just inferior to the acromion of the scapula, which is also palpable. The lesser tubercle is the anterior projection just inferior to the anatomical neck. The intertubercular sulcus is the groove found between the greater and lesser tubercles. Just distal to the tubercles is the surgical neck, a narrow area of the humerus where the head tapers to the shaft. It is so named because this is the common site of fractures to the humerus. The body or shaft is more cylindrical at the proximal end of the bone, then becomes more triangular, and then takes on a broader and flatter shape towards the distal end. Located at the middle of the shaft on its lateral side is a rough V-shaped region called the deltoid tuberosity. This is an attachment point for the tendons of the deltoid muscle. The radial groove is a depression on the posterior humerus that runs alongside the deltoid tuberosity and contains the radial nerve. We can also find several distinct bony landmarks at the distal end of the humerus. The capitulum is a round, knob-shaped process on the lateral aspect of the bone. Caput means head, and you can remember this part because the capitulum is curved. The capitulum articulates with the head of the radius to allow its rotation. The radial fossa is a shallow anterior depression just above the capitulum. It articulates with the head of the radius during flexion or bending of the forearm. The trochlea is a spool-shaped process located medial to the capitulum. The trochlea has a more triangular shape and is more pointed, not curved, like the capitulum. It articulates with the trochlear notch of the ulna. The coronoid fossa is an anterior depression that articulates with the coronoid process of the ulna during flexion of the forearm. The larger and deeper depression on the posterior side of the humerus is the olecranon fossa. Because of its size and depth, it makes for a great landmark to identify the posterior side of the bone. It articulates with the olecranon of the ulna during extension or straightening of the forearm. The medial and lateral epicondyles are rough projections on both sides of the distal end of the bone. They serve as points of attachment for most of the forearm muscles. Notice how the distal end of the humerus looks like a hitchhiker's hand? The thumb on this hand is the medial epicondyle, and notice the thumb points medially, just like the head of the humerus. The first two fingers next to the thumb are the trochlea, the last two fingers are the capitulum, and the depression in the middle of the palm is the coronoid fossa. Another area you can palpate is the region right above the posterior surface of the medial epicondyle. This is the ulnar nerve, and this is the nerve that causes you to feel a sharp pain when you hit your elbow, also known as your funny bone. And that's the end of our review of the humerus. I hope you're finding my podcast helpful in your study of skeletal anatomy. Thanks a lot for watching.
Bye. Thank you.